concierge chat today with Michael Romay in New York. We're going to be doing something just a little bit different. We are thrilled to have two world-class musicians joining us. First is Dr. Ian Tyson in New York City. Hi, Ian. Hello. Hi, and, Ian. Hey, Michael. <laughs> and next is uh, Ginny Luke here in Los Angeles. Welcome, Jen. Hi. Hi, Ginny. <laughs> uh, before we begin talking about how this pandemic is affecting your industry and affecting musicians, Michael, don't you think we need to hear a, a little taste of their talents? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so Ian, you have the floor. Sure, this is the arousing bit from Mozart's third, third movement from his concerto. <laughs> Beautiful. What have you got? Okay, Zergoiner so Weizen by Sarasate. It translates to Gypsy Airs. <laughs> So Ian, um, like myself, you're based in New York City and you travel and perform and teach around the world. Uh, and in fact, you and I just coincidentally ran into each other at the airport in Madrid in January when I was returning from Morocco. So I know how you travel and teach, et cetera, especially in Africa. Can you tell us a bit about your career and your programs around the world? Yes. Um First, I'd just like to, to thank you for having me on your podcast. Um, such a joy. Um, yes, as you mentioned, I currently live in New York City where I'm a freelance classical clarinet player. Um, I play in a reed trio called Trio 212. Um, I also teach quite a bit. Um, I'm on faculty at Vassar College, at Bard College, the preparatory program, at Special Music School in New York City, and at New York Conservatory of Music and Art. And as you mentioned, Every summer I go to uh, Tanzania and I work with a nonprofit organization there called the Raja Music Initiative. And we teach students in Tanzania about music and how to play clarinets and strings. And we also do conservation efforts of the African blackwood tree, which is their national tree. It is also commercially endangered and that's the instrument that makes clarinets. So we are doing a lot of fine work. Oh, wow, that's, that's really interesting. Now, now, Ginny, you travel all around the world for gigs. You record with major artists. Tell us a little bit about your career. I am also a freelance session and touring musician, as well as recording solo artist. And I work with big arena level artists to um, indie film scores, to commercials, to my own music. And... Some artists have included Britney Spears, Will I Am, Black Eyed Peas, Meat Loaf, um, Snoop Dogg, J. Cole, Dave Matthews Band. Um, and I'm working in this time on releasing new music. And you're also teaching Beautiful. at USC, right? Yes, I'm new on the faculty as the pop strings instructor, and I'm teaching private lessons and pop strings ensemble. You know, the reason we wanted to have musicians on during this time is that people turn to music in disastrous times for comfort. People want to be uplifted. But musicians, I'm sure, are suffering all over the world. Um, can you guys tell me about that, Ian? Yeah, I think, you know, this been, uh, pandemic has been so devastating, especially here in New York. We all turn on the news and see those numbers, and it's it's so bleak and, and very depressing. But I, I think that, that fortunately, um, music does touch everyone. And even though the whole world is affected, um, you know, 
music can uplift everyone. And I feel so lucky to be able to actually still work and teach my students and hopefully bring some regularity to their day and hopefully uplift them with some music. And how has this pandemic affected you personally, professionally? Um, I think, you know, personally, it, it's shown me that we, it's affecting the entire world. So we are all in this together, you know, um, and that music really is the universal language um, that we can share when I, when I um, have FaceTime sessions with my students, a lot of times their parents are listening and engaging and, and that's kind of an uplifting moment for them too. And then just professionally, I think I've had to be a lot more creative and find ways to continue working and doing things that I love. And um, that's been a challenge, but it's really paid off. And Ginny, you're, you're based in Los Angeles, the entertainment capital of the world, which basically the industry is shut, shut down right now. How are you coping with that? Some of the work, like the recording work this week has been for churches and temples because they're doing all online. Oh. I'm also trying to be creative, similar to Ian. Um, I have had about a month of gigs canceled and three months of work canceled coming up. Uh, tours are canceled. My record deal is on hold. It's a mm -hmm. lot of shaky time for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have colleagues that have no idea what they're going to do who are extremely talented but are looking for answers and wondering when the gigs are going to start up again. And I think the time of uncertainty is for us time, a time we need to maybe pivot or go to other types of work like remote recording. I'm doing maybe mm -hmm. five to six sessions a week for producers and film sco scoring uh, projects like other composers or um, student films. Yeah. Uh, commercials and then um, live streaming can be lucrative on Twitch and on different platforms that were originally intended for gaming so a lot of musicians are starting to get into live streaming and that's yes. what I'm working on this week is yeah. getting great yeah. audio and video quality. And you were hmm. teaching at USC and then suddenly you had to transition yourself to online teaching. What, what has that been like for yourself and even your students? It was a really fast adjustment. And I think the teachers were just as shocked as the students. And mm. I've taken online courses before when I was 15 and 16 years old because I moved from Iowa to LA. So I remember how boring and unengaging they can be if not yeah. not taught well and not handled as an, you know in an exciting way so I really tried to keep that in mind when I was redesigning my online curriculum because I basically had to redesign how I was going to teach but still uh, achieve the same outcomes that we wanted from the pop string students which is very hard when they're separated because you really need them to play together. So we utilize yeah. an app called Acapella where they can stack their performances. And Ian, how are you finding the online teaching situation? A little challenging at first, just with all the technological issues that Jenny had talked about. Um, but I found that for most of my students, you know, we've gotten to a rhythm of how to call in to each other. And for mo many of them, it's actually had them focus even more because um, for most of them, they're just in front of a TV screen or in front of their computer screen all day. And this is way more engaging. It's part of their normal life. Um, just doing something different, they're um, changing the routine. I try to also do little activities, different um, listening assignments for them, um, little composing exercises just try to spice up the curriculum a little bit more and and do different things but it's it's been a good fun challenge to try to overcome I guess most musicians would be considered independent contractors as far as employment but do you guys know if you're eligible to tap into this stimulus package or maybe unemployment Jenny do you know how any of that works I am eligible for unemployment, even though I'm part-time at USC, so that's sort of good news. As far as the stimulus package, I own and co-manage 
a corporation called Saga Strings. So that is eligible. Um, I believe the new independent contractor application went out April 10th for the CPP loan for independent contractors. So that just happened, but there's a lot of miscommunication and uh, really confusing steps for freelancers right now. Are you finding that also, Ian? Um, yes, thank goodness the legislation has changed. So it now includes gig workers and musicians can apply for unemployment. I have so many colleagues that have taken advantage of that. Um, and I, I've heard from many of them that it's still been challenging just to receive those payments or even to kind of sign up. Um, so it, it is very confusing. There's a lot of kind of um, a lot of red tape to go through. Um, fortunately, I feel lucky that m many of my jobs still are taking place remotely. So I haven't had to tap into that. But it, it's such a, a useful resource for so many musicians to use. Since music is so comforting to all of us now, and you're both classically trained musicians, we'd like to hear another little play from you, uh, something classical uh, from both of you. Can, can we start with uh, Ian? Sure. Thank I will you. be playing um, the first movement from Brahms' second sonata in E flat. To me, this is such kind of an uplifting uh, piece that we all, I think, could use right now. That's beautiful. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. And Ginny, okay, we'd love right. to hear you. Yes. Okay. Here's Ina Kleider, Knock Music, Mozart. Oh, that's awesome. Beautiful. Yes. But Jenny, I know that you also play a mean fiddle as well. Can you give us a sample of that? Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. And Ian, we know you also play um, a little bit of Dixieland. And in honor of New Orleans and what they're going through, would you uh, give us a little um, play of Dixieland? Sure. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, this is great. great. And we we know we, we'd like to discuss a little bit about your industry and where you think it's going. What vision do you have, you know, in the next six months to a year? Can can you tell us a little bit about your thoughts of the months to come, uh, beginning with Ian? Sure. Um, you know, I think for a lot of us, the, the hardest part is not knowing when this will all end, when we can get back to normal life. Um, but it sounds like <clears throat> maybe this is going to be our reality for a while, so maybe up to the next six months it could potentially be that way. I think that the arts have definitely adapted um, a lot, actually. Uh, many orchestras are doing online live streams of their performances or o opening up their digital archives. Um, the Met Opera is doing that. New York Phil has been doing that. Berlin Philharmonic, Seattle Symphony, Detroit Symphony, and many, many, many others, um, which is great. I think many orchestras will start doing that um, even more, finding other ways to have their 
musicians perform online remotely. Also, a lot of my friends have been doing just kind of remote house concerts, just going live on whatever platform in their homes and you know, having a GoFundMe or a Venmo attached um, and hopefully raise some money, but, but doing things because it's not like they want to just sit at home. This is not fair. Many of their gigs have been canceled for months and months in the unforeseeable future. So, yeah. so many people are trying to and do whatever they can as they would normally um, in this new era. So I think many, many more organizations in the arts will be doing things like this and just setting up those for the future. Yes. Is that what you're hearing too, Jenny? Yes, um, my brother's Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra performance was just live streamed last week, so it's nice to be able to tune in to those concerts. Um, in LA, you know, they're always looking for the newest thing or the next best thing, and so things like sample packs, I think, will be lucrative for musicians to sample sounds of their instruments and you can buy them because I think more people will be producing at home in this time and I've noticed that with producers we're sending files back and forth so I think a lot of recording will go on now and as a musician you know some people focus on production and their instrument and some people only focus on their instrument so I think it's a time of adapting Certainly for me, I grew up in a classical mm. uh, background and world, so I didn't learn about production until I moved to L.A. And so I think this is a time to hone our recording skills and then think of these new avenues like um, live streaming and sampling and film scoring because films and TV are still going on. So film and TV placement mm. with your songs, I think, is going to be one of the next big ways musicians can make money because there's more content on Netflix, you know, than ever before. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, so both of you, starting with Ian, what type of music have you been listening to during this time? I have really been trying to go back and, and find those artists that have really inspired me over the, the year. So I, I've been revisiting some of my old, you know, idols, if you will. Um, Andreas Attensamer, Sabina Meyer, um, Ricardo Morales, um, clarinets, clarinet players and other pianists and listening to their music. Luckily, there's so much available on YouTube and other avenues just to sit for hours and hours and listen to <laughs> recordings. Um, it really does a wonder for the soul and um, just for inspiration, I think. But yeah, just, just listening to artists that have inspired me over the years. And how about you, Jenny? Who have you been listening to the first couple weeks was the blues <laughs> all blues <laughs> only blues and then and i really found that really therapeutic for me and I, I didn't know quite why and then transitioned into miles davis just all day long miles davis and now i would say it's more pop and uplifting you know almost going back to my childhood i'm craving that sound 90s pop and Britney, Christina, girl groups. And then also my favorite artists, um, Thundercat just released a new album that I love, and Kimbra. So people that are in inspiring and doing new things, breaking boundaries, I'm trying to kind of latch on to what are they doing? What are they thinking in this time? Certainly they must be growing, so I, I should too. You do express yourself through music, and I'd like to hear how you would express the pandemic through music. Uh, Jenny? Okay. This is uh, Mendelssohn Violin Concerto, second movement. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beautiful. And how about you, Ann? Um, this is going to be from the third movement of Brahms Sonata Number Two. To me, this is just so uplifting and just um, almost transformative. <laughs> Gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Yes, yes. And and maybe you could each play um, a little something for when this pandemic is over, when people can get back to their lives and their jobs and their friends. Uh, Ian, you want to go first and then Jenny will end with you. Sure. This is one, from one of my favorite um, pieces, the Horvitz Sonatina. It's the last movement. This is very happy and joyful, and hopefully it will make you want to dance after this pandemic is over. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So, Gorgeous. Ian, I love hearing you play. This is such a great <laughs> Thanks. <Lana. laughs> and Jenny, you can take us out. Take us okay, out right. of this pandemic, please. This is ACDC, Back in Black. <laughs> both so so much we really really yes. appreciate it thank you thank you great talking to all of you yes. wonderful just beautiful thank you very very much for joining us yeah we're so lucky thank and thank you, thank you Ian and all I, of you. I had a free concert I, can't <laughs> you did. I don't need to just finish it with your thank yous it's beautiful but this reminds me of a very very famous quote which is used in Italy very often and it, it is, if music be the food of love, then play on, everyone. Thank you for uplifting us. Happy holidays. Thanks, Happy you too. Holidays. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.